Hello everyone, my name is Dave, and in this video series, I'm going to show you how to create a tower-based defense game 100% from scratch using C++ and SDL2. This is part one where I'm going to show you how to set up pathfinding for enemy units so that they move towards the center of the base. The first thing to do is figure out the requirements. The enemy units must be able to move around any walls that they encounter, find the shortest path to their destination, or at least a path that's close enough to it, even if it's not perfect, and they must not overlap other enemy units. Because there are lots and lots of units that are all moving towards the same destination, I want to pick a pathfinding system that works well under these conditions. Therefore, I chose Flowfield Pathfinding. In a previous video, I explained how it works, and you can always check out that video if you want. I'll put a link in the description for it. However, the overall idea is that each tile is assigned a direction that tells units what direction to move towards. All the directions end up pointing towards a target tile, and therefore, all the units move towards it. As you can see, there's also some code to prevent them from overlapping. Therefore, I decided to use the code that I wrote for the Flowfield Pathfinding project as the starting point for this one. The first thing that I'm going to do is make the destination tiles position fixed. Because, as you can see right now, it moves to the position of the mouse. There's a class called Level, which stores all the information for things such as whether a tile is a wall or not, and the flow field directions. It stores the destination tile in two integer variables called target x and target y, and calculates the flow field and sets these two variables with a function called set target and calculate flow field. I'll remove the two inputs because the target won't be changing anymore, and I'm also going to rename the function to calculate flow field to reflect the changes in what it does. I'm also going to remove the code that involves setting the target from the old position to the new position. In the header, I'm going to modify the function as well and switch it to have private access because it will no longer be called outside of this class. I'm going to set the target X and target Y in the levels constructor now. I want it to be in the center of the level, so I'm going to set target X to be half the tile count in the X direction, and target Y to be half the tile count in the Y direction. In the level header file, I'm going to make target X and target Y constant, because once they are set, I want to ensure that they no longer change. And for sake of argument, I'm also going to change their defaults to zero rather than minus one, so that if for some reason there was ever a mistake in the code, the target will still be within the bounds of the level. Note that they were previously set to minus one because that indicated that they had never been set, which made sense with how the code was set up previously, but no longer makes sense now. The function for calculating the flow field was previously called in the process events function of the game class, where the target tile was set to the tile that the mouse was hovering over. However, because it's no longer going to be set by the mouse, this code needs to be removed. So the question then becomes, where does the flow field need to be calculated now? It turns out that there are two spots. The first is when a piece of wall is added or removed. There's a function called setTileWall in the level class that's responsible for this. Therefore, I'm going to modify it to call the CalculateFlowField function if a tile is modified. The other spot is when the game is first loaded, because as you can see, nothing happens until I add a piece of wall. Therefore, I'm also going to add the calculate flow field function at the end of the levels constructor. When I run the game again, you can see that the flow field is now calculated when the game starts. 
However, one thing that I don't like is that the target tile isn't in the exact center of the level. This is because the level has an even number of tiles in the X and Y directions. Therefore, I'm going to go to the main.cpp file where the window is created, and I'm going to switch the size from 768 to 720. I chose 720 because each tile is 48 pixels, and 768 minus 48 is 720. When I run the game again, you can see how there are now an equal number of tiles on all sides of the target tile. I'm just going to add some walls here and a few units to see what happens. Very nice. They're all moving towards the target tile in the center of the base and they're avoiding the walls. However, they're bunching up at the target tile and just stop. What we really want is for them to disappear. However, I think that this is a good place to stop for this video, and I'll continue in the next one. All the source code is available on my website, link is in the description. I've also got a bunch of other games, code, and tutorials on my channel and website, as well as a course where I create a Falling Sand platformer game 100% from scratch. Feel free to check those out if you're interested. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.